Hello people, now let us look at flaps. See, you have uh, so far looked at what skin graft is, right? Skin graft. So, in burns patient or any other uh, degloving injury, etc., avulsion, etc., you want to cover the wound, right? When you want to cover the wound, you will use skin graft. So, there is a wound and you want to cover the wound with a skin graft, right? This is what you saw till now. But the requirement there was, this should be a vascular wound. There should be blood vessels so that this uh, graft can recanalize, uh, revascularize and it can survive. This was the requirement, right? But what if it is a bare uh, a wound like a bone or a tendon or something where there is no vascularization? What will you do there? There you will have to put a complete tissue. So, tissue is what they are putting here and uh, this tissue will come with, with its own vascularization, which will come with its own vascularity. That is what is called as a flap. What is a flap? Basically, <clears throat> you are taking a tissue, a block of tissue you will transfer from the donor to the recipient along with its vascularity. The tissue itself has its own vascularity. Okay. There are two types here that you have. You have the pedic Killed flap and the free flap. Here you can see the free flap written here. Okay. So, what do you have? You have the pedicled flap and the free flap. This is also very easy to understand. See, the flap is something like this. Okay. Wait. This is your flap. See, you have uh, not cut it here. So, it is still attached to the donor. It is remaining attached to the donor. So, now this flap I have raised and I will just turn it and I will cover this area. Okay. So, uh, this was having its own blood supply, isn't it? The same blood supply it still gets. So, this is a pedicled flap. Did you understand this? Look at this. So, this is where there is a uh, um, uh, uh, bare area, let us see. So, they have cut something like this and this area, this one is now actually covering this area. It's just, so this had its own blood supply, still it has its own blood supply. So, this is a pedicled flap. Did you understand? And it's a tissue, right? Did you understand over a bare area? That's what they are saying. Okay, so did you understand what is pedicled and free? What is free? Free means you have taken the flap. It's a completely free flap, right? You will detach it completely from the donor area and then you will transfer it, trans, transfer it to the recipient area. Where uh, the vascularity of the flap is immediately restored. So, whatever blood supply this one had, you will have to take that vessel and attach that to the donor, donor's vessel. You will have to, you will have to restore this uh, vascularity. Did you understand free flap? So, guys, look at this. This is a where you can see this is a flap that has been raised, right? You can see it has its own vascularity and this is pedicled and you can just cover this uh, 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 wound, right? So, this is a pedicled and this is a free one. Free one, what is happening? It has its vascularity. You have detached it completely from the donor site and you are putting in the recipient site and you are going to do the uh, anastomosis, microsurgical anastomosis you have to do for this flap, right? This is the free flap, okay? So, when will you do this flap surgery, guys? What are the indications? So, basically, wherever there is this, uh, you cannot do a free skin graft because there is exposed a bare bone, bare tendon, bare cartilage. You don't have vascularity, right? That is where. And if there is an exposed joint, obviously, if there is exposed major vessels and nerves, looks like, again, there is some no vascularity or what? Okay. Implant procedure following or sorry, implant has got exposed, is it? Implant exposure following orthopedic procedure. Wound with soft tissue loss. If there is a soft tissue loss, so you cannot just do skin, right? You have to give the tissue to the person. Okay. Then defects which need better contour to improve cosmesis, especially in breast reconstruction. Okay. Following mastectomy. That is what they are doing. Breast reconstruction, remember. So, after a mastectomy, that person needs breast reconstruction. That time you can use a flap because it will give better contour. Okay. So, classification of flaps, you have pedicled and uh, free flaps. Pedicle means it remains attached to the donor site uh, during its transfer to the recipient area. So, you can have so many types of pedicle. You can have the local flaps. You can just rotate, transposition, uh, etc. You can understand, right? You can just rotate it, etc. This is the local flap. Pectoralis major myocutaneous uh, PMC flap. This is important. There is also a de delta pectoral DP flap which you can use. Then uh, tram also very important, uh, transverse abdominus myocutaneous flap which is used for breast reconstruction but this is not the best one because the when you remove this from the abdomen then the person can go into hernia, they can get hernias. So, there are so many types of pedicle flaps, let us look at these. So, you can look at this, this is the delta pectoral flap, 
they have taken it and uh, they have put it here looks like have they just turned it because it should be pedicled right so this is the guy how he looks now so this is pedicled so one of them is what delta pectoral so we come we finished this one delta pectoral flap we finished for head and neck defects obviously you can just turn it around for the head and neck this is uh, what is this pectoralis major myocutaneous flap is there then transverse abdominis myocutaneous tram look at this this is the tram flap so they are using it for breast reconstruction but how can this be pediculated oh it is pediculated is it is it still continuing oh you can see this they have it goes like this so it is still attached so that is how this tram flap is helping the breast reconstruction but this is not the best one because this person can get hernia here right so the best one actually is this diep flap they said what is diep we have to check now so but this diep seems to be a free flap isn't it they have taken from here and they have put it here so here they are talking about distant flaps but this doesn't make sense how can they go from okay sub auxiliary flap for hand defects that kind of makes sense they are still in the same around the same area but it's little distant okay few examples of pedicled as flap skin flap fascio cutaneous flap muscle flap based on what they are picking up right you have the myocutaneous flaps so you're taking the skin and the muscle is it adipo facial flap osteo cutaneous flap here they are showing you that pmmc pectoralis major is it what is this here they have taken something and what have they done radical parotidectomy they have put it here but is this pedicled how can it go from here to there okay it's pedicled maybe internally there's some connection this is a bed sore which is covered by a local advancement flap okay local advancement so it's pedicle right now let's go to the free ones but remember you will have to do micro surgical anastomosis because it's a free flap and you will have to take its vascularity and give it to the recipient's vascularity and make the anastomosis remember so this is a free flap you completely detach from the donor area before being transferred to the recipient area the vascularity of the flap at the recipient site is immediately restored by anastomosing the vessels of the flap with the vessels of the recipient area using microvascular techniques not at all hard to understand isn't it so you have the donor here flap donor flap it has its blood supply then here you have the recipient area right then what you do you put this um, uh a flap donor flap on the recipient area and then you do the anastomosis by some surgery that is called as the microvascular technique will anastomize the vessels of the flap with the vessels of the recipient area so these free flaps or microvascular flaps guys just remember you will have to have microscope etc and um, you can do free tissue transfers of tissues like skin muscle bone intestine omentum etc you will have to anastomize the vessels of the flap to the vessels of the donor site latissimus dorsi muscle myocutaneous flap is a type of free one so let us look at that then rad radical artery forearm flap gracious sorry gracilis flap and free fibula flap all these are free so this latissimus dorsi flap that is ldf so what are you doing here you are this is a musculocutane sorry myocutaneous flap based on the thoracodorsal vessels so you will reconstruct the lower half of the face neck breast chest wall axilla upper arm etc this is a free one you can put anywhere is it okay so let us look at this latissimus dorsi flap. here you can see the latissimus dorsi flap guys look at this and this doesn't look free to me actually this seems to be more like pediculated only just remember guys it can be free so you can use it for face and neck and uh, chest wall axilla upper arm etc latissimus dorsi flap is ldf thoraco dorsal vessels okay uh, what else are the free type of uh, flaps what else did they say this one radical artery forearm flap gracilis flap free fibula flap okay leave all that did you Guys, look at this. This is latissimus dorsi flap. See, they have taken the latissimus dorsi to cover the area on the uh, arm. So this is the free one, right? This exactly is the free one. It's completely they have removed from the uh, donor area to the recipient area. No pedicle. So guys, when it comes to pedicled and free, pedicled, what and all you saw? You saw that uh, delta pectoral DP flap. Then you saw this PMMC flap, right? Then here in the a free one you saw the latissimus dorsi flap right do you remember or you forgot see in that you know you have to remember for the pedicled one which the arteries are this dp flap no which is the artery do you know 
in this dp flap no the artery is internal mammary artery delta pectoral right pmmc flap in that that is pectoralis major myocutaneous flap the artery is thoracoacromial artery okay remember this is used in so many surgeries they describe it as the workhorse among the flaps in this not just myocutaneous you can have osteomyocutaneous P P pmmc flap okay you can include the fifth or sixth rib and you can use it for mandibular reconstruction so that is why pmmc which is the pedicled one right pmmc which is the thoracoacromian artery is the pedicle of this flap remember pmmc uh, thoracoacromian artery is the pedicle of this flap you can use it as a workhouse among the flaps you can use it for reconstruction of the head and neck defects uh, uh, neck cancer etc you can also use it for mandibular reconstruction when you can you also take the fifth or sixth rib when you include the osteo part of it osteomyocutaneous part it can be the you can do reconstruction of the mandible which, which rib fifth or sixth rib so here they are showing you that uh, pmmc so fifth or sixth rib rib you can remember you can use it for even mandibular reconstruction pmmc pectoralis major myocutaneous uh, c what is c myocutaneous flap Remember, tram is also pedicled, okay? Transverse abdominis myocutaneous flap for breast reconstruction. So, though tram is they're saying is good, they use it a lot, but actually DIP is, EP is the best. Deep inferior epigastric perforators, this one, okay? This is good, DIEP for breast reconstruction. Have you understood the concept of flaps, guys? So, vascularity along with its vascularity, either it can be pedicled or free and uh, so many terminologies are there here like... Uh, tram and then uh, pmmc and uh, delta pectoralis and uh, these are the pedicle and in the free you have the latissimus dorsi flap etc okay lot of terminologies